Oh man. We're get we're reaching the point where <laughs> this this version of the theme is growing a little old. <laughs> I'll be honest, I was sick of it like maybe three episodes ago. <laughs> <laughs> I still like it. I still like it. We don't have to listen to it when, when we do <laughs> I know. Look, we're just setting it up. But, you know, it's just uh, I do plan to change it every season. So um, that's part of what's going to happen. Anyway, you hey need everyone. to find like six more of these things. <laughs> oh, yeah. we're There's there's a bunch, obviously, uh, from, you know, many things. But anyway, everyone, welcome back again to Newbie Star Trek again. I'm Marvin again uh, with Dan and Ricardo again. Hello. This is Dan again. Yeah. Hello. This is Ricardo, but once again. <laughs> uh, I, I feel like we should preface because um, this might be. So first of all, uh, sorry if we didn't uh, we didn't upload an episode last week. So sorry about that. Uh, if we're going to be totally honest, it's because we basically lost a recording. <laughs> All the all the recording is there. It's just well, so full. yeah. We didn't lose it. Wherever it is, it's intact. It's intact, sort of. It's, it's in so all the tracks are so horribly out of sync that it would take like an incredibly long time to cut it together. And I can't. I just don't have the time. So it's actually faster to re-record it uh, and then just re-edit that. So that's yeah, why so we're here. <laughs> you'll never hear the better version of this episode. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know. I mean. This sort of, if you know, early plug uh, on on our Fugitive Games channel, uh, we, our initial playthrough of Max Payne, uh, the last part, uh, all the game audio went missing. Uh, so after fe feeling devastated for a weekend, uh, <laughs> Dan and I ended up re-recording it, and I think it went better uh, in the second recording. So I feel that's like, one opinion. I, I think it did. <laughs> I think it went. I better. honestly, uh, okay, full disclosure, I don't even remember my opinion of one versus the other. I was just <laughs> glad to be like to have it all done when it was when it was done. Because it's like, oh, we did finish it. Yeah, yeah, good. Well, <laughs> Well, I think part of it also is is that uh, our first playthrough of those last parts were a slog. Like we were like, oh yeah, that's true. That's true because you, uh, you kept dying. Yeah, because um, so you played so terribly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so now I was better when I played the second time. Yeah, so, so you got a lot of practice. Yeah, and it had that moment where like I accidentally sa quick saved right as I died, so I was caught oh, in like yeah. a existential loop of dying. As soon as I reload. Yeah, so, you were living uh, out um, <laughs> loop, 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 looper. Yeah, so we had to like figure out how to fix that uh, by just killing everyone within like a second. So, <laughs> um, so that was fun. But anyway. It's all coming uh, back to me. Yeah, yeah. It was uh, better that time. Yeah. Good job, better. Marvin. Yeah, and this re-recording of the big, the big goodbye episode will be better too because we we watched the big goodbye uh the first major holodeck episode of tng i have a question uh if dan dan may know this ricardo doesn't um no i guarantee <laughs> it. uh is the holodeck in the original series at all oh shit i don't I'll, know i can answer that i don't know <laughs> that is uh, that's an answer you're completely right uh <laughs> Um, let me see here really quick. Uh, I, I guess I think, I think the answer is no. Yeah. It was not. So. Yeah. Yeah. Even though for some reason, versions of holodecks existed in enterprise, like the show enterprise. So <laughs> wait, when is enterprise is enterprise supposedly Enter the very, very like enterprise it TOS. Yeah. The enter enterprise is literally like, Hey, we are starting this, the federation. Mm. Like this is like the first main voyage of the enterprise. Got so, it. Yeah. So, uh, that's, that's, that's fun. Huh. Anyway, uh, the big goodbye, it aired on January 11th of 1988. So, Dan, I think if you could remind us what happened around then, that would be great. I'll remind you again. <laughs> um, so just just for starters, this uh, since it aired on January 11th, 1988, you may note that uh, the last episode that we had, Haven, was aired on November 30th of 1987. So there's been mm -hmm. a six-week time skip since then. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I made the joke last time of, it's like the Naruto Shippuden right. time skip. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> just damn it 
<laughs> well, because I because I, I riffed on it very naturally that time, and I couldn't this time. <laughs> <laughs> you missed. Your- I'm just uh, I'm just lamenting the lost jokes. I'm sorry. Oh, um, oh, oh. Anyway. <laughs> um, in, in that interim, uh, just a couple of notable things stood out to me when I was trying to research it. Notable films that released included uh, Wall Street with Michael Douglas and Charlie yeah. Sheen, Greed is Good, et cetera, et cetera. And on December 23rd, uh, I think it was like three weeks prior to this um, mm-hmm. or so, Good Morning Vietnam was released. However, it would not take a top box office spot until next week after this week so it's mm. on its rise to fame right now but the the issue with that is that uh it took a while for it to get wide distribution and so um yeah for the first few weeks it was just kind of kicking around in a in a limited release yeah because so, people didn't really yeah. believe in that project like i think it only worked as a project because uh, robin williams it was like his his passion project and then like he was really pushing for it but pretty much everyone involved thought it would be a huge bomb but at the time of, robin williams was a hot commodity was he not he was not a hot commodity yet that's the thing no. like he well, had i think he i forget what he did before this was he I, was he already a part of mork and mindy by that time yes but i yes. think his foray into uh features was a huge bomb at first so i mm-hmm. think i think he might have done popeye before this oh, and right. that was a popeye. huge bomb and then they were like okay so robin williams is not a star and then, but he was like, but I have this. <laughs> because Popeye didn't. Well, because Hollywood's stupid. So, I know, like, you know, I know. It's so, not like they ever you know, stopped. They'll, uh, they'll, they'll, they'll just, they were just like, it mostly because it could be, it's, it can't be because it's a stupid movie. It must be because Robin Williams is not bankable as an actor. Uh, so then, um, you know, his passion project was Good Morning Vietnam and they pushed it through and the rest well, is history. You know, he became huge. Well, I mean, he had the world according to Garp already. So he kind of had like, I mean, that movie was, did pretty well. I mean, especially like... I think it, it might have done well critically, but I don't know if it was like a huge... Like, it wasn't a huge hit. No, 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 hit. no. Yeah, but, yeah. but you got to think about the 82, you, there were people... St- you were kind of still riding the 70s wave of like, oh, you, these great directors that are making these interesting movies. Mm-hmm. And it was directed by George Roy Hill, mm-hmm. uh, who directed like Butch Cassidy and like this thing. So like they, those dudes still had clout. So, and I mean, it was out of character for mm-hmm. for Ron Williams. I think that's why it didn't do well for him. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. it didn't launch him into the star that he eventually became. Right, right. Um, but yeah, no, you're right. I, I think Good, Good Morning Vietnam is what really is yeah, what Yeah, I, I mean, it, it gave him an Oscar run, right? So I yeah, feel like, yeah. I mean, like, yeah, I think people went from going, oh, he's that weird guy who uses, does like the Mork and Mindy and uh, yeah. whatever, like stand up that people accuse him of stealing. <laughs> and then- uh, it turns out he's a genuinely funny guy who uh, can play in a more dramatic capacity if you need to. It turned out that Robin Williams was funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and good at what he does. So. Mm. Mm. How about that? Oh, I forgot to mention that. Well, at least for the, this would be the very last week that the three men and their baby rule the box office. Just wanted to say <laughs> that. Um, and uh, also in other news, uh, Gorbachev and Reagan sent some sort of nuclear missile treaty, whatever. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, we don't even need to go into that again. Who cares? Yeah. Who cares? Just to why everybody, Marvin, been, you should be part of the model UN. <laughs> I just remember that. <laughs> I've been dealing with with Gorbachev a lot lately. Why? <laughs> I've been uh, I've been playing uh, Cold War, uh, Call of Duty Cold War. Oh, and, uh, you know, right. That's oh, you've, right. Been, you've been dealing with Reagan's, Reagan's too. like all yeah. up in that in that game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Isn't it weird? Bitch ass Reagan. That, yeah, that's what I'm about to say. Isn't it weird that so many people like the the, the like the, the the later viewing of Reagan has been very positive for whatever reason? I don't Is know. Is there a why. scene where he like rips off his suit and he's all buff and then he starts like? <laughs> You know, <laughs> using a bald eagle to like, you know, slap terrorists around or something. <laughs> no, 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 no. He's very, he's very weak. This man. Okay. He's just, he's just doing Reagan shit. Yeah. Reagan. yeah. He's falling asleep while he's in a meeting. Yeah. And stuff. <laughs> there's there's a, there's a picture of Reagan on Air Force One with like sweats and dress shoes on, and I'm like, yeah, that's yeah. looks about right. Just a, a really old dude who shouldn't oh my, be president. I remember why I went it, so. Just to reveal a bit more myself, I went to California Institute of the Arts for my master's degree, and then uh, also known as Cal Arts, Cal Arts, where 
the only thing people recognize from CalArts is animation. Uh, but I didn't go to their animation school. I went through yes, their, their... that famous style that they only teach yeah. at CalArts. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely what they do. Anyone who <laughs> is just, yeah. It's funny because everyone thinks there's a CalArts style and you go see what students actually make at CalArts and it's fucking bonkers. Like they don't do anything like that at all. So, well, until Cartoon Network gets, its, gets and, their yeah, hooks into them. It's, it's a, that's the thing. It should be called the Cartoon Network style. Because <laughs> well, uh, uh, no, even, that's, even that's super unfair because they they usually pool examples from Disney Channel and Nickel, Nicktoons yeah, and other yeah, shit like that. Yeah, like, yeah. But then that's why it became CalArts style because CalArts alums were, you know, could be found sprinkled throughout those shows. And yeah, it, it's just yeah. a bunch of assumptions part, made. Well, part of it's I also- can get a little up about this yeah so part of it's stop. also well part of it's also just because like the pitch process for a lot of it includes character designs and a lot of these execs they just want like they just look at a certain character design and go oh yeah that's what that's it you know so that's that's part of it but anyway and also I, like <laughs> sorry no go, just ahead, one go last ahead, thing. no go ahead go go ahead go ahead just to be clear it's not necessarily bad that certain design sensibilities are similar to each other no not at all <laughs> The reason why they look like that for a lot of them, some of it's because it's it's easier to pitch to a certain group of execs. The other is because it's functional and it's good, like it's pleasing, you know. No, and um, also simplistic lines are easier to animate. Yeah, uh, yeah. Expressively. I mean, because like, because American animation does a full twenty four, whereas for most of it, at least, whereas like you know, it's mm. not. I mean, a lot of it, right? I mean, they're not doing twos for a lot of it. Like a lot of it's yeah, something. they are really. Yeah, like like a like an adventure think times TV- and twos. Yeah, really. Yeah, mm. it doesn't look like twos or unless I'm ones not is remember. Disney. Ones is like you know, like if you look at any Disney movie, that's right. Ones. Okay, okay, but it's not like fours and fours and sixes like anime, right? So no, 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 like, no, no. It's not anime at all, and the, yeah, and the yeah, budgets yeah. are completely different. Uh, and anime it, has well, anime well, also, like yeah, it's it's also a completely different like work. It's like flow, one like, craft single of American cheese. That's anime. <laughs> that's the budget they get, <laughs> and they have to share it across all the animators. Uh, and they have to work twenty hour days. Uh, for, it's so sad. I I, I really hate thinking about it for Boruto. <laughs> oh yeah, speaking of Boruto. <laughs> Wait a minute, no. My my son is also named I couldn't. I couldn't even wrap around to the time skip joke in this way. (laughs) It doesn't even work. Anyway, I went to CalArts, and um, what the fuck was I even going to say about CalArts? Sorry, I completely Uh, derailed the discussion. (laughs) I just need to get that off my chest. It's fine. Oh, no. We went to one of our things was that um, I was in the film directing program, but we did this weird thing where we decided to like, part of it was a historical perspective thing. So we went to the Reagan Library right? That's in California. Yeah. And it is, <laughs> it is just shocking what you're allowed to pretend is the truth. <laughs> like it starts off with you entering a theater and it plays like a reel of, of like Reagan's biggest hits. Right. And then you go into a, sh- a, sh- a showroom where it's like before Reagan was president, look at all these movies he was in. And they're trying to pretend he was like, like a really did they include like, bedtime for Bonzo? Yes, it's in there. So like they're trying to pretend like he's like a huge mega star, like a Tom Cruise or something. When in reality, he was like fine. He had a middling career, you know. And then like they have all of these like oh blah 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 blah. They have this part where like you go from like a, a speech podium, and the next room you go into is like this really dramatic, darkly lit room where a projector loop plays of Reagan getting shot. And you're like, oh, my God, that's when Reagan got shot in his career. And it all ends with this room talking about Reaganomics. And it just lies about Reaganomics. <laughs> it's just it's like, even though it's like like most the vast majority of people who know what the fuck they're talking about claim in, t- in modern times that Reaganomics ruined everything. Uh, this library claims Reaganomics saved the 80s. How's oh, a simple concept? <laughs> uh, f- f- uh, what is it? Flood, flood down? <laughs> flood down economics. <laughs> you pour all the water on at the top and it just... <laughs> everywhere, everywhere and everyone's rich. <laughs> right? That's how it works. Like the I rich just remember, people get, physically can't hold all that money. It just leaks out. I just, I just remember <laughs> I was, I was there with my friend Corey, and we were just eating ch- shitty cheesecake from the cafe uh-huh. uh, at, at the Reagan. Lo- it also had the Air Force One in there, uh, so we went walked through, took a walk through it, and I was like, "That's fine, whatever." 
But then uh, afterward, we uh, were at the cafe and we ate some cheesecake, uh, some shitty cheesecake. And I was just talking to him like, I can't believe they can just lie <laughs> and pretend this is a library. <laughs> like, it's just it's just lies. Could it's you like, borrow books? I, they, oh, they technically has books, but it's behind like glass walls he can't reach. Oh, <laughs> so, so I don't know. I don't know what the fuck this place is. Uh, I, I don't know. There, did you guys hear about the, the Trump library? The brothel. <laughs> 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 uh, the, the Trump library should just be in McDonald's. Just fucking do that. Like, with uh, with whores inside. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, no offense to, to ladies of the night. They, 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 no. It's a profession. They, you know, I, I yeah, honestly, them. this is Make really unfair to whores. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. 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 Actually, it's, I, it's unfair to McDonald's too. Worker. You know, so let's. I don't know. It's what? also unfair to libraries. Yeah, <laughs> they're not. Oh, all I know the perfect bitches. the perfect uh, site for for Trump's library. Um, you know Tommy's the the, the burger chain in LA. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know how they have rip off Tommy's? Yeah, you, know? yes. you have Tommy's T O M M I E S. Yeah, you know. And then there's a famous ripoff of it called Tomies, right? T O M Y S. He's a Tommy. Yeah, so Tomies, uh, but it burned down right before the pandemic. So that's his library. <laughs> yeah, the burned down library. site of Tomies. So I don't want to call it a library. <laughs> no, uh, the it's the Trump urinal. That's what we'll call it. The Trump. Uh, can you tell we hate Trump? <laughs> No, we uh, have, uh, we have <laughs> Hey, stick Politics. to podcasting, newbie Star Trek. <laughs> Get a, stop talking about politics, Star Trek. Yeah. <laughs> it's came... funny, you go into Star Trek shit posting on Facebook, it's like the most political Facebook page I've ever seen. <laughs> but then there's like a rules about it. It's like, well, you can't just like have a, you can't just slap an image of Jordy in there and expect it to like apply. It has to but be totally somehow does. Star Trek-y. But it totally does. <laughs> in practice. It's literally a meme of he goes, oh, reconciliation point saying no, but motherfucking consequences. <laughs> He's pointing going, hmm. That's what we need. What episode does he have a beard in? I think it's just later seasons. Oh. Uh, there's a, I forget where it is. There's a round table discussion where, you know how Riker, later on you'll see Riker, uh, he hosts a poker game uh, and he brings everyone in. And during one of the poker games, uh, he has a beard, Riker has a beard, Jordy has a beard, and one other person has a beard and Beverly Crusher's also there. And Beverly Crusher starts talking about it. And everyone starts talking about their beards. And, and she then, also has a beard. Well, then she eventually goes... <laughs> She eventually goes, I don't know. I think people in beards are not trustworthy. And it's like supposed to be like, I think it's supposed to be like a joke about mirror dimension, you know? Uh, uh, mm. That, that, that kind of, mm. Because you want to go T in that case. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's just because Riker has a beard. So everyone, you can't just, it'd be weird if the, for that episode, they just shaved into a goatee. <laughs> For this for a joke <laughs> they should <have. laughs> missed opportunity complete missed opportunity uh they just give him the michael jordan hitler go go <laughs> that's a spit that's suspicious uh but anyway we watched the big goodbye we didn't watch the the, the beard episode and uh ricardo explained it very well last time so i feel like we should we should hear that again oh ricardo my god <laughs> i'm already upset man um because Ricardo, if we remember correctly, last time you said you're actually not that big a fan of this episode in particular. Not yeah. Okay, so let's do this, dude. Because I'm not a fan, <laughs> but we're going to do this again. Fucking lizard people, dude. I hate them, dude. I hate them <laughs> in real life. I hate them in this fucking show. Uh, what kind of bitch ass people? What are, the, what are these lizards named? Or the bugs? They, they are insectoid. They're insectoids. Yeah. And they are the Harada. Or yeah, the Harada. Right. These bitches, right. These yeah. bitches are like, dude, if you insult They develop Tekken something, 7. Something <laughs> bad is going to happen. Something horribly bad is going to happen. And, and they don't tell us what's going to happen. Uh, why do we need to? Also, if we have translators, why don't we just fucking translate the shit out of us, dude? Why have have to like? What is the that's that's actually a really good to point. Talk to them? Yeah, because technically, universal translators are always on. 
So yeah. I don't understand why in this case, for some reason, we can't use the universal translators. Fake I mean, it. like, even for, uh, even without the trans, like, w- without that concept in play, you hear in the episode, they speak over the intercom in English. Well, they say, we are doing it for th- your benefit. This is like, fine, I yeah. guess. But no, 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 no. This is you're being a bunch of bitches. Blizzard people. Yeah. It's, it's funny because it's also like they say in a briefing, they're like, this race isn't even that important. We're kind of doing this as a lark. Like we like Star, Star Starfleet actually has very little uh, incentive to actually form formal relations with these people. But however, uh, the whatever. threat is real. It's so real that they refuse <laughs> to tell you how horribly they mangled some other officers <laughs> yeah. for not saying their inc- incredibly like, difficult yeah. greeting perfectly. Yeah, it's like very high risk, low reward. And I don't know why we're risking Jean Luc Picard over this, but here we are. I know, I know. <laughs> there, there are a bunch of of those people like uh like Vince D'Onofrio and Men in Black. Oh, more, <laughs> more sugar, please. Um. <laughs> <laughs> and uh but you have lizard people or whatever they're called arachnids or Harada. Harada. and they're like look we need you to speak in our language uh as when you introduce yourself to us mm-hmm. or we're gonna be very fucking upset we're gonna burn you we're gonna fucking do horrible things you, yeah. you have you seen pulp fiction that's what we're gonna do to you and <laughs> and uh and they and they they're 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 expecting old loop card to to deliver this this uh this greeting salutation in their language and old old Lukey Picard, he's in his he's in his quarters and he's like, oh, the H goes be- silent, but then if it's before the S, he's like, <laughs> he's like anybody learning a any American idiot American learning a second language, <laughs> uh, and uh, and he can't well, actually. Get it. I, w- I would like to flip that a little bit because for someone who learns English as their second language, English is a is a huge hodgepodge of random ass rules with a bunch of exceptions. It's true the way he describes some of the rules where it's like unless. Yes, this is here exactly you know? it sounds like someone learning english to me yeah because english is english is a non american english in particular is a nonsense amalgamation of like five different languages smushed into one dialect and it's uh it's a nightmare for for people who are not from america to learn again at cal arts we had a bunch of international oh my students. god here we go again <laughs> and now we're rant about cal Ar- no, <laughs> it was always such a sh- it was always a fucking like <laughs> They, they, it's so difficult for them to learn the language and they speak like Chinese, which is like incredibly difficult. We should just learn in in math, math, everybody, math is universal. Let's just all learn ones and zeros. And we all talk in binary. Um, Yeah, let's all learn binary, but then learn the binary necessary to learn only English binary versus, (laughs) you know, other, other languages of binary. Yeah, Yeah. And yeah, it'll be great. It'll be great. So, um, it'll be be great. It's going to be great. You have, uh, Deanna Troy, Mm -hmm. who, you know what? You know what I was thinking the other day? Mm-hmm. Is that I watched the show and I'm like, man, this person's kind of hot. But I forget, like, oh, the show is like in the 80s. So, like, everybody's like a great grandmother or somebody else now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. They look nothing like this now. Except, oh, no. except, um, old Patrick Stewart. He looks the same. He looks a little, I think he's had like, like Botox or something. Cause when you look at him in Picard, the show, he's, he looks stretched. I mean, he like does look eye. aged. He's not he exactly looks, the same. He looks puffier, and his eyes look like they're stretched or something. I, I, I always guess so. I always think he looks like really strained. I mean, part of it is that he is legitimately older in in Picard now, and like they're making him do like action at the worst time in his life to be doing action. Uh, but I don't know. It, it, I I feel like even Picard is fi- the age is finally caught up to him. Uh, he, he's like um, he's allowed yeah finally i mean he's like murtaugh he's like i'm too old for this shit yeah um yeah. jordy so has deanna, aged really well yeah deanna troy is like hey don't worry you gotta let loose man you gotta you gotta you gotta remember you you've been wanting to go back to the holodeck and it's been recently upgraded think, yeah it's been recently upgraded and what she, i feel like what she, she she's hinting at is like hey Go fuck something in there. Go fuck something. <laughs> relax. Get out of your head. But no, what he does is he, like an old fucking grandpa, is he goes and revisits an old goddamn timey fucking whodunit <laughs> instead of fucking something. Uh, instead of LARPing. Uh, instead yeah. of instead of uh, getting his rocks off, he decides to LARP. Yeah. Yeah. Instead yeah. of visiting some digital ladies of the night, he visits an old timey thing. So he, he goes to the holodeck and he's like, oh, yes, I'll revisit my old friend. Dixon Hill. <laughs> also, why is it Dixon and not Dyson? 
How come it's spelled the same, but sometimes it's pronounced Dyson, sometimes it's pronounced Dixon? Oh, is it? Like In that. what context is it spelled Dyson? Or a, yeah, like or Miles a... Dyson. It's oh. not Miles Dixon. Is it spelled Dixon? D-I-X-O-N? I, I thought so. in, in the movies? Oh, Are you talking about T2? On. Hell yeah, dude. You know I'm talking about T2. I thought There's it was only no, one. No, it's, no, it's spelled, it's spelled D-Y-S-O-N. Yeah. In, in the oh, movie. okay, okay. Then you fucked what, up, Ricardo. All right, that's another check mark for Ricardo. Hang on. There is a Miles <laughs> Dyson, uh, a, a director. Oh, okay. Um, okay, maybe yeah. I'm thinking of that. Anyway, so he goes to visit his old friend, Dixon Hill, mm-hmm. and he goes into the holodeck and it opens up and he's automatically in the fucking LARPing thing. Yeah, yeah. Which we have so many questions about. So many questions that I don't know are, are answered in this episode, maybe in other episodes, but... I actually have a question that I failed to mention the first time we recorded this. Mm-hmm. Let's hear it. The fact that there is a Dixon Hill program to begin with, mm-hmm. who who made it? Where'd it come from? I, yeah. Know, that's Why the do thing. they have it's it just, ready? That's the thing. It's like, I feel like, I guess someone just... Of all really the literature and-, and media they could like <laughs> recreate in holodeck programming form... Because yeah. it certainly isn't just as simple as here's a book or, uh, or hell, or, or maybe, maybe it, it is. Or is it? Maybe it is. Maybe it is. Maybe you know like, what? Maybe, maybe it has like, to be that way or else this wouldn't make any fucking sense. <laughs> yeah. Like, maybe maybe it's like adaptive AI. So like they, yeah. they put it in, right? Mm. AI auto reads the novel and like starts creating characters automatically. You know? Okay. So you know, they, like, 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 like how when you like. It's like how when you're type you're you're writing in Final Draft, right? And you put start making characters in the character thing. And they use some like what was it called? Like Deep Dream, whatever. Oh well, well Deep Dream is that weird picture thing, right? Where it like creates weird picture stuff. Or you're talking about something else? I don't know. I actually, <laughs> I, I'm actually uh, like I'm I'm in uncharted territory here. <laughs> well, well, in uh in Final Draft, you can when you're writing, um, and you you start typing in uh. A characters into the character f- like uh, field right before dialogue. Final draft will actually remember all of that and create like a list of characters, right? So I feel like maybe you, the, in the future there's a similar thing where you just throw in a novel into the, the holodeck computer and yeah. it just absorbs the entire novel and then it goes, okay, here's the list of characters. Here are possibly their traits and blah blah blah. And maybe the upgrade was that it you know made these characters more realistic or something because like they said it was upgraded, right? Because of the first time they used the holodeck that I remember is when Tasha Yar did the Aikido to the fake guy. Mm, right? and no, the first use of holodeck was when they found data. No, sorry. sorry, I mean the I mean the latest one, the latest time they used it. The was, last uh, time. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The last time they used it was Aikido. And then yeah. she ma- she points out very specifically, oh it's it's just a dummy. Like it, it has no personality or anything, right? And um, and uh, discount Wakanda guy was like, "Oh, you can create people without souls." Yeah, yeah. So now the upgrade is that they give them souls, and that's that's what makes them. They have shoe souls. Yeah, they they have better NPCs now. That that apparently is the upgrade because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. they they haven't they're not wanting for like environmental generation because we've seen extensive like water yeah, first, and, yeah. and, and and like space spatial recreation because Riker was able to like kind of traverse the whole area before finding data in the first place in that first episode yeah and then like the first time they showed up that water was like a stream which is like that's and and Wesley got wet he yeah it's it. real wet ass water so that's that's yeah, dude. that's Fucking sophisticated <laughs> Wesley got whopped, so you know. Yeah, dude. That's that's difficult. That's <laughs> difficult to get whopped, shit, dude. Yeah. Um. He, so like. Oh, I mean, Wesley is the- kind of a. P- <laughs> 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 yeah. <dude>. Zing. Uh, <laughs> he's definitely he's definitely a pussy in the next episode. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, so uh, Luke Picard goes in there and he's like, "Oh, I'm gonna be Dixon Hill, yes." Yeah. And he goes in there and there's a lady already in there and she's like, "Oh my." Will you please save me? Uh, something about to kill me. Yeah. And uh, she said, "Um, she said somebody wants to kill her, and that she doesn't know who it is. It could be her. It could be a bunch of people. This dude that uh, what's his name? The dude I forgot his name already. Oh yeah, it's it's he's a weird name. It's like oh Red Block. Cyrus yeah, it's Red, Red Block. Block this like gangster. Him. Yeah, could be her husband. It could be a lot of people. Mm-hmm, she doesn't mm-hmm. know who who it could be, but she's mm-hmm. like, I need I need old Dixon to to investigate. And then um." She gives him a little smooch, mm-hmm. and the smooch is on him. It's on his lips. Yeah. 
that's always a that's always a weird thing about the holodeck is that like okay you have the rule where you have to come in with clothes right yeah so that's that, something i brought up last time yeah so that that implies because because when he walks in uh everyone goes oh you're wearing a bellboy outfit so it's like yeah, yeah but so that implies that the, the holodeck can't put anything physical right but then it does well, stuff yeah. like lipstick marks and also later on someone gives Beverly in the holodeck a stick of gum and it's like did it make a stick of gum well, like the only explanation is that the holodeck is also a replicator but right, that seems right. incredibly dangerous this. that's incredibly dangerous so but i guess the holodeck is as we will learn in this episode is inherently incredibly dangerous so hear me out hear me out okay how about like so how about if like Let's say Jordy or somebody goes in there. Mm -hmm. They're having a fantasy and they fuck somebody or something in the mm -hmm. holodeck. Mm -hmm. And it, they stay in the holodeck for nine months. Is there a <laughs> child that's born? Um, Inside the holodeck? Yes. But is that oh. child real? Uh, Take the baby <sighs> out of the holodeck and find out. Oh, man. this You see, now we're getting into the existential shit yeah about. that's probably an episode that's been proposed like m more than once in in various star trek writers oh, rooms yeah. and they're oh, like man. no fuck that we're not gonna we're yeah, not I gonna bet. we're not gonna call what this. if there's like an episode where it's like oh there we discovered a colony where people haven't been out in public for years and then like they discover that the entire colony lives in a holodeck and then yeah. the twist at the end of the episode you mean like a civilization of people who like cooked up to a bunch of vr give up machines yeah but the but the, but the twist at the end of the episode is that it's just one guy and the entire village is npcs and he's oh. he's, he's just been like starting a family with them and that's that actually very akin to a certain episode of justice league oh yeah remember yeah. that one i do yeah that's true well well, it's you're, not, gonna well to, you're gonna have to delete this because I'm gonna write the script. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been written. Justice Link did it, so we'll be lost. How do they do it? How do they do it? Uh, it turned out that like this, uh, like goofy sidekick boy was like this crazy psychic powered mutant who recreated like the old Justice Society from his from his childhood, like that he read about. Like they were his favorite heroes, but like mm -hmm. due to some horrible accident, he was left alone and full of psychic energy. And so he kind of like manifested in an entire fictional city where that was protected by his childhood heroes. And like he just kind of acted as a character in that world. Mm -hmm. And it was like enough of a real manifestation of that reality that uh, the Justice League like came by and they solved some problems. But they over time realized that, wait a minute, no, this is adding up. And this kid's always near us. <laughs> yeah. The fuck is wrong with you, kid? Oh, interesting. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. 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 Justice mm. So, good show. Watch it. Good old Bruce Tim. Hey, when I'll are we going to do it. Newbie Justice League? <laughs> I mean, Newbie next. Bruce Tim. Um, I don't know if I want to just do Bruce Tim. He, <laughs> so it, he's not a guy you want to focus on for too long. <laughs> no, well, all I mean is that, that that'll allow Newbie DCEU. AU. AU. EU is the bad one. Yes. That's, that's, that's the movies. So Ugh. we don't need to get the deep in those. There's nothing. There's nothing to get deep into. No, 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 no. <laughs> not at all, dude. Um, so, so you have you have this new holodeck that like could generate cars, that could generate streets. It, it's, I, I mean, the last we saw, it was just like nature, like a little creek, creek. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, uh, it was also the little little uh, s like sand world that yeah. old that old Riker uh, sad world Riker went to. Yeah, yeah Riker's like sad fuck boy yeah. view. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fuck yeah. boy point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he's about to leave, and uh, this like mousy little guy comes looking for him. Mm -hmm. He looks like the dude uh, from like um, from M. What's his name? Uh, what's the that old actor's name? Peter Laurie. Peter Laurie. Yeah, he's oh, like yeah, a Peter yeah, Laurie yeah. type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he comes in. and He's looking for for old uh, Dixon, and Dixon's not there because Picard left the holodeck. And he goes because he, he's being he's been called back to the bridge. So mm -hmm. he's walking, or he no, he hasn't been called. He just he just left for a bit. He's so excited that that with his new upgrade. So he leaves and he's got lipstick on his face and he's he he's so excited he calls everybody from the bridge to like a conference room. <laughs> yeah. He's like he's like yeah. guys he has a whole meeting stop about what it. you're doing. Yeah. Stop what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, but we have to get like people to, to take our post. Yes, let's do that. Just I'm just imagining you like running out to the bridge. It's like everybody shut up. Come in here right now. <laughs> yeah. I have to I just tell you had all the something. greatest time. It's okay, here's the scene. I, I pulled the clip because I, I you too. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most excited I've ever seen Picard on the show. And when I looked down into the street, 
I actually saw automobiles. <laughs> automobiles? Mm -hmm. An ancient earth device used primarily for transportation. Ah. Also seen as a source of status and virility. Often a prime ingredient in teenage mating rituals. Teenage mating rituals? From that window, I could see an entire, um, uh, city block. That's right. Sounds. Smells. You make it sound so real. Well, that's how it felt. Incredible. Hmm? Oh. Well, I'm, uh, I'm going to go again. Only this time, I'm going to dress the part. <laughs> Why not come with me? Yes, I'd like that. I want to take that uh, 20th century historian. Um... Who, Whalen? Yes, Whalen. I bet he knows more about Dixon Hill than I do. Shall I tell him, sir? Invite him, Mr. Data. This is supposed to be a recreational activity. The sense of reality was absolutely incredible. When that woman kissed me, it was so... Exciting? Yeah, so uh, gets, he, he kind of cock blocks himself. Because clearly yeah. Beverly wanted to. Well, well no, he cockblocks Beverly. Yeah, exactly. Cockblocking guess, yeah, requires yeah, yeah. like an eager initializer. <laughs> yeah. That's true. He unintentionally prevents himself. They also yeah. first name or went mention Waylon, and he's just like some rando some, that some comes guy. out of nowhere. Yeah, um, it could have been somebody they had that they had already talked to that we had met already. But like no, he might as well have been wearing dude. a huge red shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know necessarily why they do it this way, other than they don't want the audience to be work. Because late spoilers later in the episode, he gets shot, and it's a real shot, and then. I guess it's because I don't know. But then they, they don't they, even they, cash out on like the setup because he doesn't actually die. So yeah, like they, they introduce a completely expendable man, but then yeah. they don't expend him. It's just they just lower the stakes, I guess. For some reason. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, it should have uh, been Jordy or somebody that yeah you care about. Yeah, it should have or Riker, right? Because Riker, why not bring your number one into to the simulation with you? Can like have oh, fun. that's very irresponsible. Someone's <laughs> got to someone's got to captain the ship while everyone's gallivanting. That's in true because they're also San bringing it, it, it'd, be, it'd be it'd be really funny if all of the leadership <laughs> in the ship just went into the holodeck while they're supposed to be preparing for this really important diplomatic meeting. Because that means the the commanding officer on deck would I think it would be Troy Deanna if really? everyone yeah I, this is this is actually the part of um the the plot point of another episode where uh. A, a thing happens and then uh, basically people are trapped in the rooms on ship and then the only people on the bridge are uh, two people and Deanna and they go well Deanna you're actually now the technically in charge because you, you're the acting captain on on the, the bridge so I feel like Deanna actually outranks uh, a certain number of people I'm not sure if that's because later she actually applies to become a commander but I, I do think she actually holds rank at the very least yeah like for now they exclusively refer to her title as counselor i think she always remains counselor but i think it's because um that's like her primary job but i think she that she technically holds like a, a rank like like the rest of them on the bridge do so hmm. i don't know yeah and um <clears throat> so you have you have a uh, he's really excited to invite waylon and his uh, you know and then he's like yeah i'm excited let's, let's invite him Let's not. Let's not. Let's not tell him he's going. Let's invite him. It's gonna be fun. Yeah. And then Jordy and Data are walking down the hallway, and uh, Data's like, "Who is this Dixon Hill motherfucker?" And then <laughs> uh, Jordy's like, "Dude, he's like this dude. He's got like he's like a Sherlock Holmes type." And then Data goes and like studies up on everything there is to know about this Dixon Hill, mm -hmm. and he's and he's like. Color me interested. I know my 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 face is really pale. You know what? For, <laughs> for the technology they have, they couldn't they couldn't tan him. Data. Uh, yeah. I guess not. <laughs> I mean, you could probably you might be able to just assume that Data chose not to tan himself because there are a lot of other Maybe things he... about his demeanor and mannerisms that uh, have to be taken as as intentional. Maybe he thought it was inappropriate. You know, maybe he thought it'd be like a type of face. Because we you know? see him mimic like human expressions yeah. all the time. We see him affect, take on the affect of a 1940s gangster. 
or Sherlock mm-hmm. Holmes for that matter. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. He is completely well, yeah, like, capable of talking like a normal guy, but he never does like by default. Yeah, yeah it's weird because because when he's when he's doing like a parody mimicking, he can sound like a person. But then he he goes on the record by saying, I am very bad at talking like a human. And it's like, yeah, I- it's it's those, it's those <laughs> sorts of things that make that really like make my mind twist into a into a pretzel while I watch things like data lore. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Where it's like yeah. where they try to make huge plot points out of like you know how human data is or can be. I'm like he 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 does it all the fucking time. What do you, <laughs> what do you do? anyway? It's he's human when the plot ne- needs it for comedy when it's convenient. <laughs> I mean, Brent so Spiner next- is always like bursting at the seams to stop being <laughs> data. Like he, all he yeah. ever wants to be is not him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, and it's the next thing. The next thing we see is is Picard wearing a. Baggy ass fucking costume. <laughs> yeah, 30, that trench coat is costume. gigantic. He can't. He they yeah. can't. He can't get a suit that fits him. Everyone else looks really sharp because like uh, Data steps in, Wayland steps in. They all wearing these nice sharp suits. But Picard's suit, he looks like he's wearing like he's like a little boy wearing his dad's clothes or something. Maybe it's true that. to the character Dixon Hill. Maybe it's a thing where he never wore a, a well fitted suit. Oh, that could be a trait, right? Yeah. Like that Dix, Dixon Hill And Data is actually kind of goes overboard. He looks like a straight up gangster with the pinstripes. Oh, I like yeah, it. Though. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and Waylon, you know, he's got a bow tie. He looks like a suit fits. And then Data comes in here and he's like, he's looking sharp, dude. Mm-hmm. He's really looking yeah. sharp. Yeah. And he's like, I mean, I join you guys. I've studied all up on Dixon Hill. And they're like, ah, fuck it. We don't want to break the fucking robot's heart. Come on in. And then the effects, the effects on this thing is really cool. Like when the door opens, they go in and they're in that, they're in that city. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's really a special rever- effect. The, the reverse shot is like, it's the city, but you see the tunnel up from the bridge. Uh, mm-hmm. Sorry, the, the tunnel from the Enterprise. Not, not the tunnel, goddamn fucking uh, hallway. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, hallway uh, tunnel. It, yeah, yeah, and it looks really, it looks, it's a well done special effect. Mm-hmm. And then the doors close and the door disappears. And they're in the holodeck and there's... All all these people walk in the streets, cars, steam coming off the fucking the old uh, uh, manholes. Mm-hmm. If you know what I mean. <laughs> um, <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> that people come in the manholes. Like I don't know what you're talking. About. <laughs> There's steam coming out of the manhole. <laughs> And then you have, uh, you, you, they immediately go to get a newspaper. And the newspaper guy is a character actor that you'd know from everything. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's uh, the gun salesman in Terminator. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know his name. Does anybody has, have his name? Not at the ready. I don't, I don't have his name, but it, okay, it's, okay. It's, it's like Star Trek has tons of like character actors where you're like, oh yeah, it's that guy. But yep. he's, yeah, he's, yeah, he's yeah. in the show now. So yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, his name is, I think his name is Dick Miller. That's what it is. Dick Miller. Yeah, yeah, Dick Miller. Yeah, he's in lots yeah. of B movies too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, lots of canon films. Whatever. And uh, and he he's he's the the newspaper boy, uh, w- uh really old man. <laughs> the newspaper boy. <laughs> he hasn't been a boy for a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And they start reading the news, and Data's like, "Oh, look at this! Oh, the newspaper! Oh, Time Magazine!" And uh, he's telling him, you know, uh, Dixon Dixon Hill or Luke Picard is like, ah, I don't have any money. And he's like, ah, you'll get me next time, Dixon, old Dixie. <laughs> uh, and uh, and then they're reading about about this la- the socialite who died, and it's the lady from the beginning of the show that Luke oh, no. uh, that uh, Dixon Hill was supposed to so- solve her case, but you know he's a bitch and he fucking left town <laughs> to invite all his friends, especially Waylon, his best friend that we fucking just heard about. And he's like, yeah, she's dead, man. <laughs> he was killed. You didn't pause so the game before you left. Yeah. yeah, now I know. And which he should have, really. That's true. <laughs> Can you pause the game? Um, he saved it. When he left, he said he said like safe settings or something. i I don't know. <laughs> you can't pause, mom. It's online. Yeah, maybe it's like an MMORPG, you know? It's like always moving. You know, you have it's like Nintendo choice. games. You can't pause. <laughs> um like he went so, AFK and then something ganked him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, someone definitely yanked him. And then the the detective shows up and he's like, Hey, wh- where were you at this time at this place? And he's like, Oh, no, not not me, friend. And he's like, yeah, there's something fishy going on. We're going to take you in and give you the third degree. So they, the, the detective takes him in. And then um, you we go back to the bridge of the Enterprise. And and then uh, Riker's now in charge because, you know, the old captain's is uh is in the holodeck and then something weird happens which i'm not sure last time we discussed it we both had different views on what happened mm-hmm. 
I think there was something sketchy going on with these fucking weird ass lizard people. I think <laughs> that they sent some sort of like ghost in the machine type thing because this like beam comes in and it literally goes through the bridge, through right. the hallways, and into the holodeck controls. The doors open on the on the holodeck, and this thing goes in. It's like the most right. powerful, most aggressive scanning beam ever. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's a scanning. I think they sent a virus it's on purpose. A computer, right? a yeah. computer virus. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. my theory. I know it is weird that theories. it affects specifically the holodeck, even though yeah, it slammed yeah. the entire ship. You would think that they, they would have a whole thing where they'd be like, oh, sensors are offline or. OK, you know, counterpoint. Some other so why the hell would they know what? I, I don't know. Like what? Listen, why would what would their what would their plan be? We're going to send this beam over there and affect their holodeck, which we are sure they have. <laughs> Maybe they, they wanted to kill the, the captain. And they but knew did, that why do they how do they know he's in there? How do they know anyone's in some, there? Some spies like, hey, dude, <laughs> you know, the captain notoriously is in the holodeck yeah, all yeah. the time. Fucking dude. Mm. I get a computer virus to, to attack. Our him, intel no shows time. the captain These loves reports to fuck fucking in the offend us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I think it's just it's just they just needed some they just the writers just like and then the holodeck fucked up. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, that is literally what this is. That is literally what this is. And then they're like, I guess we I need guess, a like, we need a fuck upper. Yeah, I guess I guess it's the fucking insect people's fault somehow. Let's just say that. Okay, we have to move on. We yeah. shoot this we shoot this in 2 days. I would have been <laughs> satisfied with Jordy just spilling a drink on a console. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or, or or old or old uh what's his face, Wesley. That he's like yeah. he's like he's like teenage meeting rituals. Oh my god. Oh god. <laughs> no, he's he's running through the hallways trying to grab a ball just like in the in the in this <laughs> Sex Planet episode. Every yeah, he, every time you need something to just malfunction, have Wesley Wesley like catch something and yeah. fall into it. Yeah, whenever something goes wrong, it's because Wesley <laughs> is trying to grab a ball, so he runs into the holodeck. And every console. time the mediators just transport in, it's like we fucking told you, man. <laughs> this is why we should have executed him because <laughs> he keeps doing this. <laughs> Can't keep we getting should've... away with it. <laughs> <laughs> this goddamn war criminal. And uh, and so and so the, the the this ghost or virus, as I as I call it. It goes into yeah. the machine and it fucks with it. And then all of a sudden, like you have Beverly Crusher who's trying to go into the machine and yeah. the door's like, it's like playing a joke on her. Like, yeah. Open, and then she tries to go in, they close. But also, they close slow enough to where she just could just fucking hurry up and get the fuck inside the holodeck. Yeah. yeah. But no, she struggles to get into the holodeck. Finally, she gets in there and she is in the police station. Yeah. And Wait, hold on. I want to point out right here that. That door fucking up should have been a red flag for Beverly to be like, yeah, nothing in the here in our modern future fucks up. Yep. Yeah, yeah. We should run this, a diagnostic should, on this. Yeah, holodeck. should immediately go. This is weird. Yeah, and I, you would get, you would grab then you would grab like a box or something, right? Something and, with and, a light on it, or, or no, just just grab like a box and jam it between the doors to be like, okay, we're gonna make sure this door doesn't close just in case. Because <laughs> if these doors closed forever. That'll be fucked up. So, and the, 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 no, she just wants, she needs to go in and fuck Picard. So, that's... okay. I have, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Can you eat in the holodeck? Eat? I think they do. I mean, they do, they, they have drinks. True. So I imagine food is also, it's why I think there is a replicator in there somehow. Okay. Okay. Now, it's gotta be. Hear, hear me out. Hear me out. What does the enterprise work off of? Nuclear energy? Uh, it it works off of dilithium crystals, which is just random. Do they wear out? I don't know. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> I, I I I'm curious. Like, so say they get marooned somewhere, right? Uh huh. Uh huh. Can they just go into the holodeck and say, "Well, we're just gonna, we're gonna live here for now in 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 a paradise"? I think I see. That's see. That was my idea of that colony thing. But I think they could potentially. Although, actually. Remember when um on the 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 outpost episode, right? Where the ship got sucked off power and then like very quickly they were like, "Oh shit, we have to go turn off life support," you know? Right. So I I wonder yeah. like I wonder how stable the power is or or, or that could have just been a contrivance of for the plot, I don't know. And then so I honestly have no idea. I don't think this it it's probably well explained in some sort of technical manual somewhere, but so long as power isn't part of the plot, 
it never seems to be of any concern. Yeah. Yeah. It just seems to be like, yeah, whatever. We're, yeah. They're we able to do anything they power. want unless power is a specific like hurdle to, to overcome. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. I, I don't, I don't think that's necessarily because they go on long journeys and stuff. Right. And then they get powered for a long time. So actually, yeah. Like, I don't know if maybe like whenever they like stop somewhere at like a, like some Starfleet outpost or station or whatever it happens to be, like, are they refueling quote unquote or recharging something? I mean, those would be the times in which you could do that. Yeah. So I just looked it up. Apparently, dilithium is not necessarily the source of power. It is uh, just like a controlling agent for warp drive. Okay. So I, 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 don't, I, I don't thought know dilithium crystals were like a key component of a warp drive, but I, I like I wasn't sure if there was energy or yeah. what. Yeah. What powers the Enterprise? <laughs> Real uh, newbie Star Trek. Let's go. <laughs> We're learning. All it's all it says is it's powered by a matter antimatter warp drive. Perfect. That doesn't help what at does all. I don't know. It's it's fine. You know. Okay. It's like it's like when you look up even in the technical manuals because like if you get into the nitty gritty of the science, the transporters don't make sense because if they work on a on a atomic level you start getting into quantum mechanics right and the problem with quantum mechanics is at the moment it's the heisenberg principle where, where the moment you the heisenberg uncertainty principle because the moment you observe a particle you have changed it right uh which is not what you want because you want it as it originally was if you're gonna replicate it exactly right hey that's not so, fair you change the outcome by observing it yeah exactly it's literally it so uh the, the way the technical manual gets around it it says oh we have these machines next to the teleporters they're called heisenberg compensators uh and then like huge nerd fans would ask Oh, Heisenberg compensators, how do they work? And the joke is that the the show's writers would always respond very well. You thank you. That's, <laughs> that's it. So well, if you <laughs> if you observe them, then they will stop. <laughs> Don't look at them. Yeah, if, them. if we told you how it worked, then they would stop working. Part of the transporter training is for the technicians is to 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 put the Heisenberg compensators behind the door so no one looks at it when you're transporting. Because the moment you look at it, everyone's mm -hmm. fucked. Yeah, man. It's like you know, <laughs> it's like Outer Wilds. <laughs> uh, Don't look which at the it. LP you can check out on our channel, Fugitive Games. Uh, Seriously, check that one out. It's it's, it's a legitimately awesome game. Or yes. actually, just play Outer Wilds, then watch, watch our LP watch and get really <laughs> mad at how I play it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, so you have Beverly Crusher coming into the the faulty ass fucking holodeck. Yeah, and she goes into the police station and she meets up Waylon and. Data. Mm -hmm. And old Data's talking old timey now. He's like, hey, yeah, they're giving him the third degree, you see. Yeah, yeah. and he's way better at it than Picard is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or Waylon. Waylon's a bitch, dude. Waylon's just um, like, oh, we're, we're in a hole deck. Oh my gosh, I've studied this in books. Uh, and, <laughs> and, and, and <laughs> What's funny is that, like, it, like outside of this experience, Waylon should then be like, yo, I'm going to go back in there all the time. I'm a, I'm a historian. Yeah. Like, why wouldn't yeah. I want to be immersed in this at all times? Also, he's a historian. Uh, the fucking Dixon Hills is fiction. So shouldn't he be going around going, this is all inaccurate? <laughs> well, uh, well, Dixon Hill, um, the original like property within this universe was invented at the time. So right. like you think, ostensibly you think it should have been authentic enough. Okay. So it's just more of like a, a reflection. It's not like it was a, tw a 2060, 40 or 2648. AD interpretation of the 1940s. It was okay. It was the actual 1940s. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's fine. And um. And then so you have um. Yeah. Uh, basically, Beverly's like, I oh, will go sit down. Wait for him. Uh. Let's not interrupt him while he's getting interrogated. And yeah. she goes and sits down next to the lady of the night. And she starts hiking up her dress. She's like, Oh, I gotta be like this lady next to me. Yeah. Yeah. And uh. And so then. And then you go. Uh. We go find out where where old Picard is. He's getting the second degree because the third degree is a beating. Uh, the first degree, I'm trying to remember the the, the degrees. I, first I, degree I is yelling. First degree is yelling and intimidation. The second degree is this is a real they thing. Grab him by the collar and then oh, fuck. Is this yeah, actually like, a real thing? I'm I'm being yeah. Serious it's a real here. thing. It's a real th no. There's a real th the real thing. It's it was invented by this guy in New York, this police chief in in, in New York, 
and there was three degrees. The third degree was you just beat the shit out of people. Yeah. Um, but like liver blows so they don't get like bruises and stuff. Yeah. yeah okay, yeah, that's yeah. dark. Uh, <laughs> well. So so, so, so is, it like, is it like the baseball sex metaphor where over time the degrees st- uh, meant different things that got more intense? It could Or have, less yeah. intense? The modern yeah. third degree is planting crack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this you is the shoot two, fucking minorities now. The two and a half fucking. degree is turning off your body cam. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh no! Goddamn fucking. Uh, uh, look, we're not gonna get into it because we're gonna, it's gonna get real, real fast. <laughs> uh, yeah. um, the third degree. I think this is wrong. Uh, this says it, the third degree is intense and thorough interrogation, scrutiny, or questioning. Now, I think I think the third degree is is, is when you start beating them. Because that's I what they mean the, by intense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, enhanced. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, and, uh, oh no. <laughs> and uh and so you they, they really give it give it to him. And he's his he's he's disheveled. You could tell like he's he's been roughed up a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, he's sweaty. He's manhandled. He's manhandled. Yes. Uh, by the by one of the guys. Yeah. And uh, you find out that that one of the detectives there is his friend. Uh mm-hmm. um is like he, he you could tell like they work together, mm-hmm. Dixon and this detective. Yeah. And uh and he's like like he knows his old lady. You know, mm-hmm. uh, they know each other pretty well. Mm-hmm. So, um, and then you have you have Doctor Burley Crusher, who is getting fucking really, really. Um, I guess she's not, but th- this cop's getting really fresh with her. He's like, yeah, yeah. Man, I don't want to say what I do to you because it's not for a mixed company, but let's <laughs> say it involves a lot of Vaseline and a lot of talking powder. <laughs> oh, um, God. and uh, and uh, he he definitely wants to take her out to the to the governor's ball or whatever the yeah. bullshit. <laughs> and uh, and uh, no, he uh, wanted to take then, her to see Tommy Dorsey, which is a wonderful true. big band leader. Everyone should listen to that oh, yeah. music. Yeah, but yeah. not under not under duress from a, no, no, from no, no, a no, big no. sex pervert. Yeah, he was yeah, a trombonist, by the way. Ooh. Trombonist. Then, <laughs> trombonist. <laughs> that doesn't sound right. You find something then, funny then, about the word tromboner. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we go back to the bridge and they're trying to reach uh, everybody on the holodeck but they can't yeah. so the breaker's like well i'm gonna go check up on this bullshit and and then old wesley the bitch as he is he's like oh i'm gonna come along Riker. <laughs> and 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 he's like no you stay here bitch ass and then and then he's like and then fucking Troy. Yeah, troy's like dude his mom's in there. Let, let the boy go, for God's <laughs> sakes. Give the boy a chance. And he's like, all right, all right, come come with me. And Jordy's already there inspecting it. But then, literally, uh, old fucking, what's his name? Goddamn, the kid? Which, Wesley, Wesley, Wesley. <laughs> how, do I, how do I forget his name? <laughs> so Wesley Wesley gets there, and he fucking moves Jordy. He's like, I got it from here, bro. Yeah. Um, and he he like takes over the inspecting of the holodeck yeah. system. Let's so put let's like, put the captain's fate in the hands of this kid. Yeah, of this child who yeah. who is a fucking war criminal and has fucked up this shit more than once. Yeah. Um. And so, uh, back to the back to the questioning. <laughs> this is my favorite part: is the the detective that knows him says, "Oh, hey, Dix, have a cigarette, man. Let's uh, let's get the fuck out of here, dude." I'm sorry, my 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 uh, my superior fucking roughed you up, and and he gives him a cigarette, and and Luke Picard takes a drag, and he's like, <laughs> "What a nerd! Uh, what a nerd! <laughs> Can't smoke! What a bitch!" Um, and um, and he's uh, uh, so where are you going, Dix? Where are you headed? Uh, what's her name? And he's like, oh, her name's the Enterprise. And the detective's like, oh, sounds sexy. <laughs> so he gets out, and uh, they're all waiting for him. And uh, when he gets out, he looks he looks at Beverly Crusher, who's waiting for him. Mm-hmm. And the detective gives him the old look, the oh boy, he's gonna fuck her tonight. <laughs> <laughs> that he does, and uh, yeah, well, yeah, of course. And then so they um, they all head to to Dixon's office. And um, meanwhile, back on the real world, not the simulation, um, old uh, Wesley seems like he found out like, oh, there's something sketchy going on here. Uh, but it's really, it's going to be sketchy to fix it. So I'm going to keep looking. So he keeps looking. And meanwhile, in the simulation, you have this, this weird dude who comes in that, that weird gangster character that I was telling you about the leech, the leech, Felix leech. Yes. And, um, 
He's like, yeah, see, you've you've uh, you've insulted me for one last time, Dixon, and uh, <laughs> and uh, and they're trying to leave, and this this fucking leech has a gun to point it at them, and they're like, yeah, you're not gonna do shit, dude. This is a fucking simulation. You you yeah. you, you can't do nothing. Yeah. Give me Waylon, your best shot. Waylon turns on the LARP and goes up. Yeah, he goes, literally says, "Give me your best shot." Like he <laughs> pops his collar him. and everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, and he shoots him. And Beverly Crusher is like, "Oh my god!" She claps. She's like, "Oh, yeah, a fucking yeah. performance." Yeah, I mentioned this last time, but it, it strongly reminds me of the of the lightning bolt LARPing video where he's that that guy's throwing lightning bolts at in the LARP in the forest and yelling lightning bolt, lightning bolt, mm-hmm. and it ends with sleep. And when he says sleep, the the enemy falls, and there's a girl in the foreground that just goes like that, like really dramatically, and that's exactly what Crusher does for essentially a LARP too. Well, I mean, so, this is the future. She probably saw that. It's probably become a cultural <laughs> touchstone by that point. <laughs> it's the memes have infected the future as a story. Dude, don't don't even joke. Memes are totally gonna be like part of studying this era of culture if we survive that long. <laughs> Oh man, memes are I would the future. Lo- I would love for like you know like thousands of years from now, right? And they they examine our like. I want know, a museum our, the, wing d- dedicated to the, Doge. Yeah, that was literally about to say. <laughs> My bad. I'm sorry. Literally about to say. I ran over there. <laughs> thousands of years. They're examining our ancient hard drives, <laughs> and and they come across Doge, and they go, "What did Doge mean?" <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I usually say Doge too, but it seems that the yeah. internet has universally agreed that is. Pronounced yeah. Doge because of strong bed. I think it's supposed to be doggy because dog and E. And Listeners, just... you must weigh in on this. <laughs> I mean, I but personally I like, will I never like stop Doge. saying Doge. That, that's my personal it, favorite yeah, like yeah, yeah. syllable to say out of, out of those words. Yeah, but, you know. It's, it's Doge. It's Doge time. Uh, and then, you know, or or the it's fine. You know. Oh yeah. Hopefully, hopefully thousands, hopefully thousands of years from years from now, people will remember that this is fine is by Casey Green, and he'll get the recognition he actually. Shout outs to Casey it. Green. I think they made a Funko pop out of it, fine or like at some point. Yeah, and he's getting Which royalties think, off of it. Yeah, he it was confirmed that it was with his um, involvement. Yeah, so thank goodness. That's, good. that's good. yeah. I always want to send a shout out to John Claude Van Damme. Uh, the greatest <laughs> living actor living at this moment. Right? Love you, JCBD. Living or, or yeah. otherwise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a legend yeah. among yeah. lions and men. Um, and so, uh, so back to the old LARPing thing. <laughs> they're like, they're like, uh, fuck, dude. The old Whaling got fucking shot. What the fuck, dude? <laughs> so they're freaking out. They're like, oh shit, something's gone wrong, man. Uh, we don't know. And they're and like the the um. <laughs> <laughs> they what's so funny is so like he gets shot and they're like oh fuck this, it's getting real man uh he's really bleeding <laughs> and uh oh, my and God. so he he gets up he gets up and he they basically tell him to fuck off they're like all right get the fuck out of here dude well, like, picard he's grabs shot. his gun yeah and gives him a backhand yeah like, he's yeah. he's a badass in that scene yeah. actually he does yeah and yeah and peter laurie is like ah he hit me oh <laughs> and i have to kill him now ah yeah <laughs> and and he he goes to get red block who is his daddy i guess yeah and so he leaves and then picard's like oh we gotta get we gotta get the fuck out of here so he start fucking groping the walls to find the door mm-hmm. and they can't and I, and I thought so there's this moment here where the doctor's like i need more light and then data gets uh one of the lamps and then he he pulls it like he gets caught up in the socket the mm-hmm. the plug that's plugged into the socket mm-hmm. and i thought oh man they're gonna use this for something like this is gonna be yeah they the draw they so much out. attention to it that yeah. you think it's yeah. a plot point yeah but it's it's nothing <laughs> yeah i think i thought like oh they're gonna figure out like oh if you follow this then we'll find the plug that leads to the door and i'm like this is genius dude genius dude the fucking lamp why didn't i think of that no uh, but, but it's no, just it's an fucking... anachronist or not an anachronist but just like one of those things it's like oh back in the past we had to use cords how quaint yeah yeah and then uh back in the on, on the bridge you have Riker who's talking to those fucking bitch ass fucking lizards and the <laughs> lizards are like we need to speak to the captain now <laughs> we lizard <laughs> people um and by the way they they're talking to each other they've already gone past the introduction why yeah. do they need fucking captain Picard to fucking speak their language this is the Fuck, stupid dude. traditions this really dude. P- pisses me off dude it really gets <laughs> my blood going dude uh, meanwhile, their they, culture they is undeserving of respect. I know they, 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 they deserve to die, dude. Um, 
And so, um, meanwhile, back in the simulation, old Red Block shows up, and mm-hmm. it's fucking old uh, Lawrence Tierney. Yep, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. I mean, if uh, if they had made a Spider Man movie like in that time, he would have been Kingpin for sure. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my yeah. god, he would be a great Kingpin. Wouldn't he Holy be? Shit. Yeah, because he's also physically really intimidating, which a good Kingpin is. Mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm. but he would it's only it's do like one take, and like he'd be a real bitch of an actor to work with. True, true. There are yeah, tons of stories about how. How much of a terror terror he is to work with um uh, actually yeah. one of the best or one of the stories that i'm familiar with is his uh stint as don Brodka at his security at the springfield try and save uh oh, yeah, for yeah, the simpsons yeah, yeah, yeah. um Can't so finish. yeah like thankfully every one of his reads was like really good because all those jokes mm. are great but he only read mm. him once and he was a big like he he got really grumpy with the directors and stuff yeah, I'll, it's just it's just I I wish someone like him was the kingpin and the daredevil because like okay everyone loves Vincent D'Onofrio and Daredevil but I just never found him intimidating I just thought he was just kind of yeah. like oh he's on the spectrum yeah That's like I for think uh, I <laughs> like, think the the intimidation factor came from like his unpredictability like it wasn't his yeah, physicality but, so much as it was like you don't know what he's gonna do next but that made him seem less of like a like okay the plot claims he's a genius but that's just the plot doing the plot the character seems like he's just unpredictable and crazy yeah and sock is a master strategist <laughs> you know what you're right <laughs> you're right dan you know right you're you're correct yes <laughs> they lit- you know it's who, why you know it's who? why literally in the third season of avatar they give him a sword because they're like <laughs> he, has, he doesn't do anything so let's give him a sword and let's let's see what he can do now yeah. you know it, it should have been like Somebody that has like presence and like you're like, oh, that guy killed somebody. It's like um, Tom Sizemore. Tom Sizemore oh, yeah. should have been yeah, Kingpin yeah. or like the other guy, the guy who plays Mr. Mr. Um, Mr. White. Nope, not Mr. White. He's in uh, Kill Bill. He's also in Reservoir Dogs. Oh. Um, the guy that cuts the, the guy's ear off? Michael Madsen. Oh, oh okay, yeah, Michael okay. Mad- I was about to say like, uh, but Lawrence Tierney is in Reservoir Dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Madsen would have been kind of... I always, remember when Michael Clark Duncan was... He was good. Yeah, yeah. he could have been a good kingpin again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I yeah. think that would have worked. Yeah, because he, he died. He, I mean, he, was, he showed up he died, in... Right? He died. I don't know if he died by Daredevil, but... Um, I think I don't know when he passed away. Okay, well that's that's unfortunate. But like you know, it anyway. Back to the 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 rock. The rock could play a good kingpin. (laughs) 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 Fucking body body slam people. He has to also like get the weight for the role, you know. So he just starts eating tons of salt and straw. (laughs) <laughs> why not we've talked about this but the rocks farts gotta be like really nasty right because all the fucking oh, yeah. chickens eats non-stop chicken you know yeah. oh actually okay if you eat nothing but chicken you're basically keto right and when i'm keto i'm actually far more regular and far less gassy so it's usually with carbs when i get really gassy so i think probably on his cheat days it's probably out of control but what are you eating chickens and fucking broccoli Actually, yeah, that's what I eat when I'm doing keto. And then I'm very like, my digestive system is like really nice. Like it feels great. Like Mm. I have no digestive issues at all. It's when I eat carbs. (laughs) I'm going to have to talk to you. (laughs) I'm going to have to talk to Sarah. Um, (laughs) This is a Star Trek podcast, right? (laughs) The nitty gritty. (laughs) It's a fart cast podcast. Uh, Star Trek um, fart cast. Fart track. Um, So, yeah. So you you have Lawrence Tierney and he's like, ah. Yeah, you're like, you're gonna be Mr. Pink from now on, and uh, <laughs> and so he's doing he's doing his fucking his his uh, his tough guy routine, mm-hmm. um, and he's basically like, uh, look, you you insulted my bitch ass friend here, and I was gonna kill you. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, yes, I must kill everybody. You insulted me, my bitch and um, ass friend. <laughs> and 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 you have you have Picard, and he's like he's like, guys, look. I don't mean to be telling tales out of school here, but I'm a captain. I'm a captain uh, in a spaceship that flies in space. <laughs> and they're like, you, you've you never brought this up, dude. You fucking liar, dude. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you, Dixon? This before. Shut yeah. the fuck up. You're crazy, Dixon. And and then he's like, and and also um, old Blockhead, or what's his name? Red, Cyrus Red, Red Block. God damn it. Just call him Kingpin. <laughs> 
How many times have I fucked up people's names on this fucking shit? Listen, podcast? listen, listen. I, 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 I empathize. I am horrible with names in real life. I, we, I had the benefit of having the wiki open. So <laughs> <laughs> that's why I, I know what's going on. That's, that's really the only dude, reason. Freaking silly, man. One time you called me Steve. Um, <laughs> no, dude. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. <laughs> I mean, the fact that you uh, said I know, Bradley. dude, means that it's happened Bradley off, did. off, <laughs> off mic. I have to. I have a recording with Martin and Steve tomorrow. You say, you say, you say to Michelle, yeah, yeah. <laughs> old Marty and Steve, yeah, yeah. Um, so I started responding to that name. <laughs> what, Steve? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, there, there you so, um, so you have you have the, the, this this red block who's like, I, we don't believe you. You're a fucking idiot. You're making the ship shut up. Yeah. But also, red block wants this thing that nobody knows what it is. It's the like Maltese Falcon thing. They don't even say what it yeah, is. It's called item. Yeah. the item. Yeah. The, the item. Yeah. The, the, the object. Item. Yeah. 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 The MacGuffin. And then, um, and then, <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then he's like, I don't have the thing. I don't have anything you're talking about. The novels that never wrote what it yeah. was. <laughs> if the novel never wrote what it was, would the hollow novel it probably have... would have <laughs> it, 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 um, or, or maybe it, it would like try to engineer something. It, it, just plur- it just shows like a like a like a mosaic object. Like it's just like like censored. Maybe it, it maybe just it just be- <laughs> maybe it just generates a literal red herring. <laughs> it's just a fish on a plate. Yes. <laughs> And and so you, we're back in the bridge, and Riker, like r- the, these lizard folk, are getting really impatient, and they're like, "Look, you're either gonna talk to us in our fucking language, like respectful fucking species, or we're gonna fuck your shit up, dude. We're gonna fuck your shit up bad, dude." But they don't say what, what kind of thing they're gonna do. They're just mm-hmm. like, "We're gonna mm-hmm. fuck you guys up, dude. Mm-hmm. Don't yeah. fuck with us, Lebowski. We'll <laughs> fuck your shit up, dude." <laughs> and so and so they're like, "Oh, guy, we gotta get the fucking captain out." And then uh, by this time, Wesley's like, "Look." I can do this this maneuver here, but it's going to definitely be dangerous. And he's like, okay, well, I'll try to buy you some time. And he's like, nope. I mean, if we do it now, do it later. It's still dangerous as shit. Why would the and holodeck be dangerous in this yeah. way ever? Yeah, why yeah, would yeah. turning off the holodeck be dangerous? That's why I think I there's know. something sketchy going on, dude. <laughs> like, what is a catastrophic, them- catastrophic failure that we can envision in a holodeck? Well, we've yeah. established that a replicator probably exists, right? So maybe it replicates, like, just a bunch of shit and s- yeah. squishes everyone. Well, it just manifests uh, a gigantic cancerous tumor. and Yeah, does everyone just get smashed in, like, Akira yeah. style? And then it know? just becomes a know. Cronenberg movie. Yeah. Yeah. It, Video it, drones they, in there. They, from one second to another, they're, like, inside out. Mm. They're inside, oh, they're outside. Oh, yeah. That'd be pretty cool. And so, um, <laughs> so he's like, Riker's like, fuck it, dude. We gotta get this guy out of there because li- these li- lizards are gonna fuck us up, dude. <laughs> get it. Get it done. Get it done, Wesley. And, I mean, Jordy's right there. He could have done it. But no, let's trust the child. Yeah. Got to give him something to do. The guy who... R- Riker's yeah. not like, Jordy, get Wesley, get out of the way. Jordy, yeah. get in there. You know? Yeah. Um, and then uh, Wesley does this little thing. And all of a sudden, they're in the office. And then the next second, they're like in some weird, like freezing cold Arctic location. Yeah. It's a very yeah. good match cut. Yeah. yeah. It's it, it's one of the... I mean, I mean the, the, the episode in general has pretty, has pretty good effects in general. This is another one of them where they... Someone really plan that out made sure it looked really good yeah because also when they come back they're covered in snow and it's fun. yeah yeah and by that point um picard's detective friend is there and he's like oh man i thought you were gonna be he brings like <laughs> whiskey <laughs> it's, a, like, it's a it's a weird continuity because he was like oh you're gonna fuck her huh and then yeah. 30 minutes later he comes in with wine yeah or or or, he or, clearly or was or alcohol he's clearly there for a fucking gangbang dude yeah he's like He's probably done by now. Now I can do my turn. And yeah. Or, or, no, or maybe he's just a huge he, bro who l- likes to celebrate every single time his buddy gets laid. Every conquest. <laughs> like, hey, you're, you're done, right? <laughs> it's been 15 minutes. You're done. <laughs> so then you have you have this detective now who's involved. And, uh, mm-hmm. Like a nary. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and so they're all there and they go into this weird Arctic fucking location and they come back and they're like, what the hell was that? And so... You have like Picard's like, see, I told you we we're in we're like in this like spaceship. This is like a simulation. And all of a sudden the doors open to the holodeck Mm -hmm. and they're like, see, see, we can walk out of here now. And old Red Block is like, oh, fuck, this is amazing. This is remarkable. And he's like, this is a two way passage to your world. And Mm -hmm. he's like, no, well, (laughs) yes. He's like, yeah, 
Basically, yes. He lies to them. He's like, look, uh, Mr. Will and I will leave. We'll get the item that you want. And we'll, uh, we'll, we'll come back. And, and Red Block's like, no, no. You're not going to pull one over on me. We're going to go I'm, get it. Yeah. I'm leaving. Me and, and this fucking, my bitch ass friend here, who <laughs> has weird eyes. We're going to get out of here. See? And they're like, okay, well, sure. Do, you know, you do you, man. And they're like, oh, you, you, you do your thing. And what's weird is that Red Block and his friend make it outside the, 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 the holodeck. Mm-hmm. So for a moment. Yeah. For a moment. And then they disappear. But they are there for a moment. So that means that they are tangible. Because, I mean, you could touch them. They could chew guns. They've been hitting people. Mm-hmm. And, they're, yeah. and they also successfully yeah. walk out onto the floor outside. Yeah. 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 Notably. So it's not like they're projections. They're actual people. And I think, what I think is that it's really making matter, right? It's making humans. It's making characters. It's making people with souls. And then when they, if they step <laughs> out of the holodeck, it's literally killing them. It's yeah. Yeah. I mean, in, in a manner of speaking, yeah. I mean, they I mean, they yeah. very quickly introduce this existential like quandary. Like suddenly, by seeing them disappear like that, suddenly, like it casts the nature of every character inside that simulation into like question. And then, well, and mean, then it's, that's it's why a, McNary yeah. like it, it, McNary sees that happen to them, and then that kind of like turns his world upside down. Yeah, because it's like you, it, you know, it passes the. Um, the Turing test, right? These holograms. Like if you were talk, if you didn't know you were in a holodeck and you just started talking to one of these NPCs, you wouldn't be able to tell that they're not a real person. Like, so yeah. that's enough to be considered sentience by that Turing test example. Therefore we are just like creating and killing sentient things for our amusement, which yeah, is a yeah. little, little weird. And it's very dark. And it's like the episode doesn't have time to worry about this issue. <laughs> oh, no, not at Basically. all. Yeah. <laughs> the episode just goes, we're, listen, we just wanted a detective story. And we got, to go. there's one thing I just realized that doesn't make sense about this scene. So, so Wesley and Jordy were right outside the holodeck trying to fix it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when the doors open, shouldn't they be looking in and going, oh, hey, Captain? Yep. yep. They should be. <laughs> or like, or like, but then hey, they were spooked dude. by this massive bald man and his bitch ass friend and they ran <laughs> off probably. <laughs> yeah yeah why does and, that happen <laughs> and so um what so would have been hilarious is if as soon as uh red block and bitch ass fred come out like they get phasered into nothing by the crew <laughs> <laughs> oh they go oh shit <laughs> start shooting them yes <laughs> Oh man, what what should have happened is Enterprise crew members, security team should have gone in and started wasting all the NPCs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. With lasers. With like rifle sized oh, phasers. Yeah, oh man. They literally just like explode, like their blood like gets all over like <laughs> Dr. <laughs> Dr. Beverly Crusher. Yeah, um, yeah. But um but they they um they disappear, old Red Block and his friend disappear, and the other gangster that's left in there. <sighs> And then Data does this thing, which he should have done since the beginning, is he takes his gun, he yeah. smashes it with one fucking hand, yeah. and he just bitch slaps him. Boom. <laughs> Permission to hit him. Yeah, yeah. He's done. He's done. And then you have this weird, um, Marvin, do you have the, the audio for this for this last scene with this? Oh, with, yeah. Uh, yeah. Because like, friend? yeah, it's weird. Like they have this this meeting here and it's almost romantic. It's like the, the thing you would expect him to do to the leading lady at the end of yeah, the movie. Yeah, it's like the it's, farewell yeah. with the femme fatale sort of scene. Yeah, but it's yes. with his best friend, which is kind of fun. But here we go. I wish I could take you with me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like <laughs> Someone has to book this creeper. Once a cop, always a cop, I guess. I have to go. So, this is the big goodbye. Oh, title drop. Tell me something, Dix. When you've gone, will this world still exist? Will my wife and kids still be waiting for me at home? I honestly don't know. <laughs> so he's just like, I don't know. I actually really like that exchange. <laughs> yeah, it's very. I mean, it's 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 very honest. Yeah, it's, it's for honest. One, right? It's human. It's yeah. And like it, but, but he's but, he, but he's essentially going. I don't have time to talk about this right now. I gotta go do the speech. These yeah, animals. like in the end, you are <laughs> still just a holodeck projection. I mean, you have yeah. your like 
own entire existence to worry about but uh that whole ending sequence you, uh, yeah the whole, that whole ending sequence is kind of oddly paced because they're, they're like okay Waylon's dying on the floor uh so <laughs> before before we leave though with this body data backhand this guy and then let's spend time going oh that was fun and then let then let's pick him up <laughs> go there's no sense of urgency that a man is dying. Yeah, Every, I think as soon as like, they realize that the hall is open, it's like, eh, he has like a whole two hours before we need to. Like, as soon as he's in sick bay, he's good. I know, we but have, we have the probably just thinking, healing machine. But Waylon's probably thinking, please, just. <laughs> he's like, no, nah, take your time. I love drama. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm in a lot of uh, a lot of pain. You should have been you like please? like distantly off screen, going oh during that last exchange. <laughs> Actually, uh, the, it would the end of it that. Would, it would. Sorry, go ahead. Is before the, the end of that is after they've already data has taken him out. But it would have been great if they didn't take him out. Again. Yeah. <laughs> and he has that speech. Like, hey, I'm dying here. <laughs> can, we, can we go now, Captain? <laughs> I'm in a lot of pain. But, but uh, like, and, uh, I'll I'll just say that at the very end, when Picard does leave and he's the last one to leave, I do really like how mm -hmm. the shot he leaves the door and then it goes to complete black as the door closes. Yeah, it's it's like kind it, of ominous. Yeah, right? it's, it's yeah. like it, it's telling you like, well, whatever world this was, whatever existence this guy lives, like it is being snuffed out here. Yeah, he's dead. Yeah. Um, and then you have you have the scene where they they finally the, the doors close, like you said. They all, it goes to black, and then you have them rushing to the bridge. Everybody's dressed in their old timey gangster clothes, and the 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 captain does the equivalent of somebody who does who goes to a Mexican restaurant, <laughs> and they order Mexican food, <laughs> um, and they they oh my god they strain <laughs> they to feign yeah. a native accent but yeah. fail miserably. Yeah. Yeah, let me get a let me get a chimichanga and a, <laughs> some menudo and a, a burrito, yeah. and Can I have the queso fundido. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, uh, it was it's really hard to to to, to, to listen to, <laughs> and he, he does that. He does the equivalent of that to these lizard people, and they're like, "Oh, we're very fucking honored." Okay, well, we we could speak in we could speak in English now. Yeah, yeah, and it's everyone like, applauses. They're like, "Yay, you did it!" Yeah, uh, this is not my favorite episode, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what would you rate it? What would you give it a rating? Um, uh, <laughs> look, look, a five's not bad. A five's not bad, so I'm gonna give it a five. It's not. We're not rating by like a like a high school grading scale, right? So it's not like five's an F. It's more of like five is middle. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Five is yeah, the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Like five is like a. I mean, if like 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 a, t a three isn't bad. It's just it's it's kind of bad. You know what I mean? Well, three is bordering on. I think it's hard to watch. Like yeah, three, yeah, I yeah, get you right. Yeah, the, the, yeah. the five is right in the middle. Right in the middle. A like, five is I, like I, I would say five is watchable but not stimulating. Yeah, a five is an episode of Married at First Sight. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> which uh, which Sarah has been watching a lot of. Well, lately. I would watch that again. I would watch Married at First Sight. I don't know if I would watch <laughs> I <wouldn't>. another. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't watch an, uh, a, a second viewing of of this episode. Uh, okay, uh, that's that's fair enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what would you think, Dan? Um, I enjoy the episode more because of the you know the the dumb costumes yeah. and things like that. So I would rate this in like the six point five range for me. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, yeah I give it. I'd give it like a six because I I think. Um, so, so holodeck episode first introduced, right? So I think it makes sense why they didn't get into the existential and like moral quandaries of what a star, uh, a holodeck could do, you know? Yeah, it seems like um, they kind of judiciously teased that, that dilemma. A little bit. Yeah. Just to, just to point out what it could be. Yeah. Um, but they, they didn't go all the way. Which is fine. I mean, but that, that also just plenty of time the, to explore. Yeah, that. there's going to be a lot of <laughs> holodeck episodes. Where you're like, we're really getting into what that means. So um, there's that. But you know, eh, it's I give it a six. So next week's episode is going to be data lore, which is like the complete opposite of this episode. Where this episode, like nothing mattered. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Next episode, huge consequences. Uh, but anyway, that was the big goodbye of the first major uh, holodeck episode of TNG.
Uh, ne- like I said, next week we're going to look at data lore. Um, if you guys have been uh, liking our podcast, uh, you could. Uh, I'm just going to go through the last spiels really fast. <laughs> uh, you could check us out on Apple Podcasts, you know, or go to newbiestartrek.com, n e w b i e star trek dot com. And uh, you know, if you go, but if you go to Apple Podcasts, you can give us a review. That'd be really nice. We also have another podcast where we discuss films and stuff. It's called the Fugitive Frames Film Podcast, where we often list movies and talk about things and. You know, if you if you liked our weird discussion about three men and a baby and Good Morning Vietnam early at the beginning of this episode, that's kind of what we do on that podcast. And then we also, as I alluded to before, have a YouTube channel called Fugitive Games, where uh, you know all three of us plus our friend Marcel we play video games and uh, for all we know, this is that's how you know about this podcast to begin with. That is true. Uh, it's very possible, but uh, yeah, um, you know, we're all cross cross media uh, yeah we're trying to infect yeah. everybody every which way <laughs> yeah. so if you have any interest in that you can check that out there but uh, anyway next week we're gonna go into data lore uh but you know this uh this episode's run a little long so i think we should cut out here uh thank you everybody for listening in on the big goodbye and we'll see you guys next time have a great time have a great day buongiorno see ya